This week's special guest, you know her as a longtime anchor on TSN Sports Center. Today, you're going to get to know her better. Natasha Stanishevsky, Joe Tilly's great Canadian sports show, coming up! Yes, I'm looking forward to this one, folks, and so are you. I know it. I had a chance to work with this woman a few times, and it was a great, uh, great experience. She hails from Edmonton. She graduated in journalism from the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology. She was a news reporter at CTV Yorkton, moved to Saskatoon. In 2009, she went to work for CTV Edmonton, covering the Oilers, the CFL. She covered the 2010 Grey Cup. She joined TSN shortly after that. Over 10 years on the anchor desk on Sports Center, one of Canada's most recognizable sports anchors. Welcome to the program, Natasha Stanishevsky. Natasha, good to have you here. Thanks for having me, Joe. What an intro. I appreciate that. Absolutely. My pleasure. Great to have you here. Now, uh, first of all, a woman who hails from Edmonton, right, right away, you're, you're in my good books. Uh, what part of town did you come from? Uh, the South Side. I... I actually lived in Leduc for some time, which is just outside of Edmonton. But uh, most of my life, I lived in Aspen Gardens, which is on the south side of the city. I don't, how well do you know Edmonton? Oh, pretty very well. I went. I lived in Edmonton. I grew up there. So, what high school did you go to? Louis Saint Laurent, which we always described as the little school next to Harry Ainley, which was like the big public school, uh -huh. and I went to the little brown Catholic school next door. Anyways, yeah. Right, right. Okay, I know. I know Harry Inley well. Um, I was. Uh, I grew up in uh, I, in the west end of town, northwest. I went to Ross Shep and Vic. I, I started at Ross Shep, but you know, ran into some trouble there. Went to Vic, ended up uh, uh, finishing off there. Uh, but by by the way, did you know that Robert Goulet, uh, who is my parents' version of uh, Michael Bublé, and Leslie Nielsen from uh, uh, Naked Gun fame, they both went to a uh, Vic Cop. Did you know that? Did you I know did that? I did not know that. Maybe at the same no. time. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Vic Comp was well, known for its its arts program, wasn't it? Like actors, actresses, that kind right. of thing. So maybe that makes sense. Yeah. Right. And I, I actually got into the program in, in, in drama when I was in, trying it the first time in grade 11. But as I mentioned, I had issues. There were problems between school and I and, and making it there. So... Uh, uh -oh. okay. <laughs> Eventually, though, I, I, okay. I, I, I did get my act together. And, uh, you know, you knew that I was a former amateur boxer. That helped, helped me turn my life around. I want to ask about your life, though. And what drew you to sports casting in particular and broadcasting? Um, I, I mean, I played sports as a kid ever since I was really little. Um, my parents put all of us kids, I have a younger sister and a younger brother as well. We were always in sports um, growing up. I played soccer and then basketball and volleyball in school. So sports has been part of my life almost forever. Being in Edmonton, uh, it's really easy to become an Oilers fan. You're surrounded by hockey all the time as well as the Eskimos, but I was probably a bigger hockey fan at that time. And I just remember watching, um, like in high school, I remember watching Hockey Night in Canada every weekend and thinking that I could be a reporter, thinking that I could probably come up with some questions and, you know, I like speaking and I just, I think, I guess I thought it would be the closest way to be to the action without actually being on the ice or on the field. So that's sort of what... Um, kind of drew me to it. It took me, it was sort of my second career. It took me a while to realize or to think that I could actually do it. Uh, but when I did to, uh, sort of take the plunge and go to school for it, it, uh, it ended up working out pretty well for me. So how did you end up getting that first gig in television at Yorkton? Uh, so I, after Nate, there's a four month uh, pra uh, practicum that you're supposed to do at the end of school. So I ended up um, starting off in Lloydminster for a month and then I went to Regina for another month. And when I was in Regina, I was actually there helping cover the briar. Uh, a news job opened up in Yorkton and I didn't want to cover news. Of course, I wanted to cover sports, but my news director said, 
faster you can get on TV, the faster you can start getting in, you know, your reps uh, and just get comfortable being on camera, the better. So he really recommended that I take the news job, and so I followed his advice. So that's how I ended up in Yorkton. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, my first gig was in Red Deer. Uh, Ron McLean was our uh, afternoon drive guy and weather weatherman. I did the sports oh. late night at eleven fifty, eleven thirty, and then uh, I did the news from from five to ten. I just rip and read the news. I just take it off the wire and, and read the news, and then but all the time I'd be writing my sportscast because that's what I wanted to do. But yeah, so uh, then you did a, get did get a chance to do sports, and, and when you moved on, and uh, you know went on to uh, Saskatoon. And got a chance to do a little more sports, and then of course Edmonton. And uh, how did the opportunity for sports come along for you? Actually, you missed one. You missed my. There's a lot of stops in Saskatchewan, so um, it's okay. <laughs> it's easy to miss one. After York, so Yorkton, I was only there for six months, and then Prince Albert is where my first oh, sports PA. job. Yeah. Yeah, good old PA, go Raiders. That was my first sports job, and I was literally there for a hockey season. I went in September. Uh, I was only there until April, and then a job in Saskatoon opened up. So PA was pretty quick, but it was my first sports gig, and it was awesome. I, like I said, I'm joking. I did cover the Raiders. That was sort of my main gig, which was great. Um, I don't know. I love covering junior hockey. I actually really miss that. I love going to all the arenas and just the passion and the fans. You have those freezing cold barns in Saskatchewan that everybody talks about. It was just, it was great. So I did that and then Saskatoon for a couple of years. Um, and then, and then a job opened up in Edmonton. I just, I feel like I, every time I needed a job to open up, it just magically opened up in front of me is what it felt like. So a job opened up in Edmonton and I applied for that and was lucky enough to get it. So I kind of went, did the full tour in Saskatchewan and then ended up back in, back in my hometown working with CTV. Right. I remember, um, you know, wanting to get a job in Edmonton. That was sort of my goal when I started out and, you know, I was lucky enough to get in, in, in the job in Red Deer and then Lethbridge. And, but I, you know, my goal is to get to Edmonton, but you know, funny thing happens on the way to, uh, to your, to your dream gig, you get uh, sidetracked a little bit. So you're in Edmonton. I'm imagining like, this is like your dream job, right? This is what you want to do. You're, you're your sports anchor in Edmonton or sportscaster and, and reporter and, Everything's going pretty well, but uh, then TSN comes knocking. Tell us how that came about. Yeah, that was my goal was only ever to get to Edmonton. That's what I wanted to do, right? I thought, you know, I'll get back to Edmonton, hopefully cover the Oilers, the Eskimos, all the teams that I grew up watching. But it's hard to get jobs, as you know, sports jobs in cities. You know, at the time, there were three jobs at Global, three jobs at CTV and that was it, you know, six jobs in the whole city. And it's like, how am I ever going to get one of these jobs? So I felt like it was a miracle that I even got one of them. I was extremely fortunate to get one of those jobs. Um, so I was there for a few years and it was great. I mean, it was really, it was really hard. I, I worked the weekends. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a grind when you're working in those markets, you know, by yourself, you're, you're doing the whole lineup, you're writing most of your show, you're watching six games at the same time, you're trying to get posts from the Oilers game and, and all that kind of stuff. So it was it was tough. Um, and while I was there, as you mentioned, I was covering um, the Grey Cup or I was at the Grey Cup in 2010 and I ran into, um, I believe he was the vice president at the time at TSN. And we started chatting and long story short, they needed somebody to cover Jennifer Hedger's maternity leave. And even though I had never really wanted to go to Toronto or to TSN, it just wasn't on my radar. Um, I ended up flying down for an audition and then I was offered the job and it seemed like, it seemed like it was something that I should probably say yes to. So I did and, and off I went to TO. Well, we're we're glad that you did see us because we all got a chance to meet you and know you, and and uh, you did such a, a, a fine job there. Um, what was uh, what would you say was uh, like? What was your the pinch me moment when you said when you sat in that chair and you looked and you said, "Wow, I'm here. I'm on TSN." Like, what, what, when was that, and what was that like? Well, I think I mean I don't think I'll ever forget my very first show. I was. You know, you're you're pretty terrified, or I was pretty terrified, anyways. Sitting up there, I 
it was kind of funny because when I, in order to get into MATE in Edmonton, you have to do um, a career investigation, I think is what they call it. So part of that was to go to a TV station and to job shadow one of the anchors. So I ended up going to, T to CTV and Brian Mudrick, who is currently at TSN, was mm -hmm. at CTV at the time. And I job shadowed Brian for a couple of weekends. And then five or six years later, whatever it was, he was off to TSN and he was anchoring the weekends and he was the person that I anchored my first TSN show with. So that was sort of a full circle wow. moment. I thought, oh my God, here I am with Brian. So uh, I, yeah, that when you're just, when you're up on that set and all those lights, it's just such a big step up from the smaller markets, right? Like TSN is just TSN. You have the whole newsroom. You have one person working on every single game. Like I felt, I felt lazy when I first um, started working there because I didn't have any. There's so little to do in a way. There's because the workload yeah. was so much more in Edmonton, right? But then you get to TSN. And all I had to do was write my intros and you know watch the highlights, obviously, and, and look through stuff. But uh, I almost felt like I said I was like, oh my god, I. I there's not enough work for me to do. I should be doing more, but um, yeah. So just the fact that there was, it's such a team effort at TSN and there's uh, so many people working together to pull that show together. That was, that was pretty eye opening for me. Yeah. You know, I remember those days working the weekends at the CTV Toronto when I first arrived there and, and working by myself and having to do the whole thing. I'm writing everything. I'm pulling video, I'm pulling clips, I'm doing all that stuff. Yeah. And, and every day, every show, it's like, it's a miracle that it makes it there because it, this is the I last know. second, everything just sort of falls into place. Oh. And, and then of course you go, you go across the, the, uh, you know, across down the, down the, uh, down the stairs and across the aisle over to TSN. And it's everything's written for you, you know. It's uh, it yeah. was a pretty cool thing, actually. I I, I enjoyed that yeah. immensely. I didn't mind kicking kicking my my uh, feet up and, and just watching a few uh, highlight packs and you know proofreading them and stuff like that. That was a pretty good gig, an awesome gig, actually. Totally. And but you know, it, it, it it's it, it, you get a lot more airtime. There's a lot more, and I I remember feeling the pressure too. Wow, that was it was it was immense because you you're so settled into your regular gig and then you got to do something completely different and there's a lot of bad living there's a lot of conversation between the anchors and you had a real nice rapport with kate burness and uh we want to just bring up a, a sports center virtual promo with you and kate uh, that we came across Fick, uh, let's roll that, shall we? uh kate what scripts are you missing from the first block one i'm not doing too bad I think I'm just missing my leaf script. Okay, great. Uh, Ricky should have that in your hands shortly. Uh, Natasha, how about you? Uh, a couple of things, actually, I'm missing. Uh, Jets and Senators and Buffer 1. Uh, okay, stand by. Uh, we're two and a half minutes till we're up. Uh, this game's almost done. It's good? Oh, I'm good. Thank you. This is a good game. I Not bad. The, the finish is Okay, pre show selfie. Ready? Okay, one more. I feel, uh, yeah, one more. Okay, ready? Yeah. Good? Good. Oh, all filter. All right. Uh, yes, of course, the wow. pre-game pre selfie, but what was going on there? I mean, we're seeing dinosaurs and cheerleaders and football players. What was happening? Okay, I don't know where you even found that promo. I don't remember. That promo was, I don't even know what happened with that, where, it, if it even aired or anything. There was something to do with the special cameras they were using that day, and they wanted to just, like, bring in these animals and these people and just make it seem really busy and crazy, which, again, I don't know if anything ever happened, even with that promo, if it went anywhere. But for the most part, if you take away all the animals and all the other action, that was very <laughs> accurate as to what is happening a minute before showtime, including the selfie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember the yeah. selfies you and Kate would, uh, yeah, yeah, that was good. Uh, what was it like to, uh, to, you know, to work with Kate and some of the other folks there? It was great. It was, um, it was awesome. I loved our team at uh, Sports Center. It's it, everybody you work with is so different, right? Everybody has different strengths and weaknesses. But I I feel like a lot of our people, most of them, who you see on TV is who you get in real life. Um, and people were just really professional. Um, really, I don't know. When you're at TSN, you want to be there. You want to do such a great job because you know how many people are watching. Um, everybody really genuinely love sports and Kate and I yeah we had a great 
uh, we had a great time doing that show together, I think, for four, almost five years, the two of us uh, up there. We were, were kind of different people, and I think that works out well. We kind of balanced each other out, uh, and it was just an awesome time working with everybody. So you had uh, a few different segments on the show that you uh, put together that were involving you anyway. We got, we got something here called Whip It Up Whenever. Now, tell me what was that about? Jay, we got a short clip with you and Jay and Dan. I guess. Just yeah. squeeze? Sure. Uh, we'll see what happens. By the way, Natasha, you, you are not going to the Grey Cup, even though your favorite artist of all time, Keith Urban, I is performing. Know. Don't remind me. I mean, it's as Keith. if it's too bad that oh, this geez. network Here, isn't broadcasting <laughs> the game and couldn't fly you out to well, see Keith. Well, I mean, Urban. we should all be going, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Jay and Dan. Okay. I the, what were you, what uh, were you making? So what were we making? I think we were making uh, Canadian maple cookies, something with a Canadian flair because of the Grey Cup. Uh -huh. I think it was maple cookies that we were uh, making. <laughs> yeah. So I do. I we've talked about it before the show. For people who don't know, I do some baking on my Instagram um, Instagram page, and I used to call it Whip It Up Wednesday. I used to bake every single Wednesday and post something, and that got to be too much. So I changed it to Whip It Up Whenever. And uh, Jay and Dan, they just thought it'd be fun if I came on the show and we baked a couple times. So I was on there a few times baking with them, but it gets a little, um, it's hard to keep the audience, like I could, it's hard to keep the audience involved. Like you got to be quick when you're baking up there, I think. Make it fast so that people stay interested. It's tough. Well, look, yummy. It doesn't fit with my keto right now, but I'm, you know, no. I, I do fall <laughs> off from time to time. <laughs> so, uh, uh uh, no, as a celebrity, you you, you know you, you you get to do a lot of different events. You're asked to do a lot of different events, and one thing you had to learn how to do, uh, certainly more of anyway, is golf. So now we've we've uh, we've got you uh, getting a golf lesson here. So first of all, let's oh, just check out no. that video. I've been golfing for about <laughs> five or six years, and the game is coming along. But there's a few things that I want to improve on. So we're starting a new series today called "How to Make Natasha a Better Golfer." Left side is starting to fire. Yep. Starting to fire. That's all good. Right. That's yep. pretty darn good. Yep. Okay. Right. So we're focusing on not going to worry about the right hand. Going to yep. get that left hip out of the way and keep that left arm close. Letter to buck. Body. Yeah. Whip it. Yeah. Well, my, oh my. That was a little better. You're hard on yourself. Yes, yes I am. <laughs> it was straight, which I'm very happy about. There you go, girlfriend, that's awesome. <laughs> that was better. That's effortless. And it's gonna roll about 30 yards because you're drawing it. How far is that-ish? Uh, buck 40 in the air. Oh my goodness. So buck 40 totally in the air, he said you're gonna get 30. Thirty, I know. So you get, uh, you get about thirty yards roll. So it's about a hundred and seventy yard drive. That's not too bad. Um, I, thought, I would probably say that that's a pretty decent drive. Um, what, what about what? What do you think of that? I think that I love golf, but I hate that. Um, I just feel really uncomfortable at, with my swing everywhere that for people to see it and to judge it and to give feedback and critique all the time because I don't think it's very good and I wish it was better. Um, it's coming along. Like I said in the video, it's coming along. It could be worse. We'll put it, we'll, we'll put it that way. My drives are pretty good. They're not, they don't go very far, but I'm straight usually. I'm dead down the middle. So I'll take straight over distance, I think, uh, all day. Yeah, you know what? There's nothing wrong with 170 yard drive. Believe me, some of my drivers <laughs> drives are 170 yards. Uh, what? Uh, tell us about who was the pro and what, what was the golf course? That was uh, Dave Nykirk at Mickelson National. So I'm doing a bit of uh, work for the Windmill Golf Group in Calgary, and that's one of the golf courses out there. Beautiful golf course, and and he's uh, yeah one of the teachers out there. Great guy. So we've been trying to just figure out um, what some, you know some work that I can do for the clubs and maybe some videos and. And stuff like that so we're kind of uh testing things out see what people like see what people are into when it comes to those videos i don't know if people actually like watching my golf swing i don't like watching it but maybe we can teach people a thing or two i don't know we'll see there, there there's nothing wrong with that golf swing believe me i've seen <laughs> you, you've seen charles barkley swing i mean let, let's face it there's, there's nothing wrong with that golf swing <laughs> that's true that's true so 
Let, let's talk about, you know, the, you know, the challenges you've come across along the way, if any. Uh, and uh, have you run into some challenges in your career? Um, challenges in my career. I mean, being a woman, I think people always expect me to have some big story about, um, you know, maybe I was discriminated against or something like that. But fortunately, um, I don't, I don't have much to say about that. I think for me, I came into the business at the perfect time when a lot of, um, news stations were looking for women. Um, so I think it worked in my favor to be a woman. I mean, I've, of course I've encountered athletes and coaches who've, you know, kind of made a few comments here and there. Um, but I, for the most part, I feel like I'm one of the lucky ones. I feel like I've always, I've been mostly like treated fairly. Um, I found that when I was in Saskatchewan working in some of those small towns or I mean, and anywhere really, the second you, you know, you're in a scrum with a bunch of people, you're the only woman there. Everyone's looking at you like, who's this girl? But the moment you open your mouth and you ask an educated question, you know, why was the power play? Why did you go one for six on the power play tonight? Or what happened with your goaltending or whatever? The second you ask a question, everyone's like, okay, she knows what she's talking about. And then it's, and then it's all good. So, um, I've been, like I said, I was fortunate in my career. I feel like jobs kind of opened up right where I needed them to. And I, I worked my butt off in those small towns. I, you have to, you know, you have to put your time in as well. But, um, I've been fortunate, uh, that I've had a great career. And like I said, not too many, not too many roadblocks along the way to TSN. Well, that, that is pretty awesome. I, I think, uh, you know, it definitely is changing for the better. And we're seeing that a lot. We're seeing a lot of, you know, female analysts on, 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 uh, you know, on hockey in Canada and, and they're doing a fantastic job. And, you know, you, uh, Christine's been there forever and ever and ever, but, uh, yes. you know, they, there's, there's really been a, a real move to, to change that. And it's, you know, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, versatility, let's say in, in, in terms of broadcasting now, um, I just don't want to touch on this just briefly, just to get your your thoughts about this. Now, Jody Vance recently published an article outlining how she'd been stalked and harassed on social media. It was really frightening. Uh, you know, uh, the guy was harassing her. Uh, he was arrested and charged. Here's what Jody had to say. Uh, because of her experience, Ms. Vance said she wants to promote public discussion as journalists, particularly those who are women or people of color, are being hit with in, an intensifying wave of hate. Jody said she hopes other journalists will do what she initially didn't, which is catalog every interaction, report them to the, their employers and local police. In her case, the criminal justice system is working, she said, but it takes far too long to win justice for her complaints. Uh, have you ever run into anything about that? What are, what are your thoughts about what Jody went through? I mean, I, I read um, a little bit of her story, and it sounds horrible it's, it sounds awful obviously that i feel like that would went to the furthest level that's the last thing you want to see um happen i feel i mean we know what social media is like you know what it's like people um can say whatever they want they can get away with it there's zero accountability they don't have to post a picture they don't have to post their name um i think what happened to her was a whole other level i've i mean i've had some terrible comments. I've been harassed on social media. Um, it's tough to, like she said, it, it's tough to actually um, hold these people accountable. It's tough to actually do anything to these people. So, I mean, what she experienced is you see it everywhere and I, I don't know how you fix it. I don't know how you fix it mm -hmm. at all. I mean, when you're in the public eye like that, um, unfortunately it comes with the territory and it, it shouldn't have to. And I feel like she, for whatever reason, right, she was just one of the unlucky ones and, and a guy chose to go after her. Um, but I just, I don't know how you stop it. I don't know how you, how you, how you get to these people. I'm, I'm glad that she got the police involved and did all of that. Right. Like you, I guess that's the only way you can do it. But like she said, I'm sure the process takes way much longer than, than it should. But you know what? It's just it, it's kind of sad, but it's kind of like a, accountability because I know that there's you know basically these internet trolls who who you know go with fictitious names in some cases, and they just and and they troll people and they say stuff that that hurts, you know, that hurts other people, and they're hiding behind their computer and and you know like they don't have to you know whatever to to do this in pub to people's faces in public, and and it's like. Uh, 
I mean, you're not going to stop it by shaming people like that, but it, it's important to have awareness and, and like, uh, uh, you know, anytime you got a chance to stop it, anytime you got a chance to report it, anytime you got a chance to, you know, uh, we just need to be better, right? Just, we just need to be better. And, uh, yeah, I, I think with hers, it, it sounded like a consistent, like a one guy that was picking on her was consistently basically a stalker, which maybe in some ways, I'm not sure, maybe it's easier to sort of put a case against that person. But when you have one offs on Twitter or Instagram, these people who just come out of the woodwork and just, you know, tweet you once and, and tear a strip off of you and say, whatever the heck, if those people, I don't know how you, how you stop those people like you block them and that's the end of it right but you right. hope that's the end of it but the things that people say um it's just it's brutal and i guess you know i just mm -hmm. it's true they don't i don't think they think you're a real person i think they think you're a face on tv and they just i don't know i'm just thinking of a few comments i had recently but it's um yeah you block them and, and hopefully you, you know kind of forget about it and move on but it's tough sometimes for sure you do have to develop a thick skin and uh yep. you know what it's like uh you can't take it personally right and and that's the most important thing is like you can't take this stuff personally because if you do it'll it'll drive you nuts and, and it's like uh mm -hmm. you know consider the source realize that whoever's doing this is a sick person you know like certainly unawoken that's for sure and and uh and that uh, you just can't take this stuff personally so you and I were both affected by the, the changing media landscape, let's say. Uh, where do you see the, the, the broadcast business heading? Yeah, great question. I, I mean, for the longest time, everybody said, you know, TV, um, TV's over. Nobody's going to be watching highlights or news on TV. Everyone's going to be on their phones now watching it. I, I don't know if that's the way it's happening. For me, I guess because I'm old, I, I don't want to watch highlights on my phone ever, Joe. I want to watch highlights and games on my TV. So I don't know if everything's going to move to digital like everybody thinks it is. I don't think those highlight shows are ever going to way, going to go away. At least I hope they don't because I love them, right? I love being on Sports Center. I still love watching the highlight shows. Um, but it feels like things are changing. I just, I'm not sure which direction they're going in. For me, I think it's the saddest part of this is the way local news has, is slowly disappearing. Like, you know, I, there used, like I was saying, there were six people covering sports, um, in Edmonton, three at CTV, three at Global. And I think both those departments have been whittled down to almost nothing. You know what it's like in Toronto. So mm -hmm. to me, that's unfortunate because I think there's so many great athletes, you know, amateur athletes, so many great stories that just aren't being told. And to me, that's a real shame. And I'm not sure how you, how you fix that because nobody seems to have any money anymore to spend on, you know, on these local markets, which is really too bad. But uh, to me, I wish, I wish that could somehow go in, go in reverse and go back to the way it used to be. Right. Yeah. I guess somebody has to step, step up and do mm -hmm. local stuff. Internet wise. It's, it's compelling television, right. That, that tells stories. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. there's something about sitting in front of a television set with my coffee and, you know, my, my, uh, pork rinds or whatever the heck I mean that day and then exactly. watching the game. Right. Yeah. Right. There's something, there's something pretty good about that. I want to talk about a yeah. little bit of some of the charity work stuff you do. You do lots of that now. You got a chance to hang with uh, George Chevallo and PEI not long ago uh, uh, when Do George is doing a little better. The, it was a golf tournament and dinner when they opened the George Chevallo Youth Engagement Center. We got some pictures here that Tom Doyle sent to us. Um, tell us about that experience meeting our pal George, who is truly a Canadian legend. Yeah, it was great. Uh, that was an awesome tournament. I get invited to some great tournaments. There's so much, you know, so much great work being done by so many organizations and foundations. I, I try and get to as many of them as I can, but he was such a lovely man. Um, just, and these pictures were great. We, we had such a good time taking these photos. Uh, that was, that was a great event. Yeah, that was a good one. What's your, what's your greatest moment so far? What would you say that, that, uh, that was like, uh, this is the coolest thing ever. Oh my goodness. You're going to put me on the spot now. I don't know if I have an answer for yeah. that one. My, the, my coolest moment <laughs> well, ever in my you, whole you, broadcasting you, sports you, career. You talked about your first your first uh, sportscast on SportsCenter. That was pretty cool. 
Is there anything else that like uh, maybe maybe a great cup game, maybe you're meeting a certain athlete, maybe some kind of like uh, I know one of the coolest for, for me was being recognized by John Candy back in the day. You know, and, oh, and wow. uh, I went to interview him and, and, he, and he said, yeah, Mr. Candy, Joe Tilly from C. I know who you are, Joe. I watch you every night. You know, like that was really for me is like, wow. But have right. you got a moment where you, where you kind of go back and say, this is like, uh, this is pretty cool. Okay, that is an awesome moment, by the way. I do not have a moment like yeah, that, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I mean, we get recognized, which is fun, no matter who kind of sees you. It's, it's fun to know that people are watching. I think for me, one of the coolest things I've experienced was actually going to the Masters a few times because I, I love golf, oh, as yeah. we said. To actually go to the Masters, which I never thought in my wildest dreams I would ever have the opportunity of doing. And, and I've been now three times, including when Tiger made his, his latest comeback and won. Uh, so I would have to say that's probably one of, one of the coolest things I've had a chance to do. I did get a chance to also do an event with Wayne Gretzky um, and interview him for half an hour, 45 minutes. So that was, that's pretty cool too. Anytime you can rub shoulders with the great one, it's, it's a pretty neat moment. Definitely one of my highlights. I was fortunate enough to be there in 84 when they won the cup for the first time. I was working at Lethbridge oh. and I got a media pass, which included the, included the locker room and I drank out of the Stanley Cup. And my God, that was insane, oh, okay. insane. But wow. you know, get, and then later on, moving to Toronto, getting an opportunity to interview Gretzky and some of these guys that, yeah, pretty cool stuff. We get we are pretty lucky people, eh, getting to do the stuff we, we, totally. uh, we get to do. Yeah, I want yeah. to ask wow. you about those, the, the, No the, wonder you ask me that yeah, question that. because your moments are like off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> those are amazing. I'm jealous. Yeah, we get lucky, man. We we we're in the right place at the right time. I was in Edmonton that weekend, and uh, Bill Tuelli, the old media guy at, uh, for the Oilers, just uh, I called him up, and it was Game Five. They they won it. It was great. Um, so um, I want to ask you about you know, women's sports. Um, what, like for example, I I mean. You look back at the last Olympics, and I think the first 16 medals that Canada won were won by, by female athletes. And why do uh, Canadian women kick ass? I mean, I think the question is, why wouldn't they? Like, I don't know why, in some ways, I don't know why everyone was so surprised that they're so awesome, right? Like, you know, like that's a bias almost right there that we'd be like, oh my God, the women are doing well. Well, of course the women should be doing well. Like, you know, they put in just as much training and time and whatever else as the male athletes do. So, man, to me, that was the best story of the Olympics was just to see these women crushing everything and just winning everything. Um, and as you know, there's a, a, a huge conversation going on right now about women uh, in sports and visibility and, and how can we get um, more money for them, first of all, and equality and all that kind of stuff. So um, I thought it was great that the women were as successful as they were, and I'm sure they will keep keep that rolling. Canada has so many great female athletes, um, as you know, Bianca and, and Brooke, and I'm sure there's a ton more out there. So. Um, I think that's just one of those things that you just hope you keep seeing that success so that soon, uh, at least when it comes to the money and the ratings and the visibility, that that becomes equal, hopefully sooner rather than later. I'd like to see these sports leagues take off. What do you think it would take for like the you know women's hockey you know uh, to, to, to take off? And I, I I wish I knew the answer to that. I know they're working hard to figure that out. Um, I know. We all love women's hockey. It's one of the you know most watched sports during the Olympics, um, and I just I don't I don't know the issues well enough to know what the roadblocks are. But obviously they're working hard with it. I don't know if getting the NHL involved is the answer, but you know you gotta you gotta grind through this. You have to try different things. Um, the product is there. The product is good. There's enough people who want to make it work that I'm sure it will. It's just from the sounds of it going to take some trial and error before they can figure out the best way. Uh, to get to get things going, you know, uh, and, and one of the most compelling bits of television I, I can recall in, in in a number of years is you know watching Canada's women win that gold medal in soccer at the Olympics. Like that was unbelievable. You know, in retrospect, there was a lot of you know, are they even going to have these Olympics because of the the COVID issues that they were having in Japan? And it, 
right up until the end, it looked like these things could get canceled. But the games went on, and the women won that medal, and that was unbelievable. How did you feel watching that? It was it was incredible. I mean, that that soccer team has you know such a little story for the last few years. The way. Um, What's the word? They they should have beat the Americans before the the refs did not play in their favor, which was really too yeah. bad in the year. So there they got was, robbed. There was so much. Pride. They got robbed. Thank you. That's the way to put it. They totally got robbed, and so just all that build up to this point, you know, and obviously Christine Sinclair is, is a huge story, and and we all wanted her to see that to wanted to watch her win the gold medal because she totally deserved a gold right at some point. So. Um, I just I love that story, and then now soccer I think is way more at the front of people's minds than ever before. Obviously, the men were just in um, Edmonton. I was at that game on Friday uh, against Costa Rica. So, wow. yeah. So women, you know, they're 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 the ones I would say that you know were growing soccer in Canada, and now it's starting to trickle over to the men's side. John Herdman obviously is their coach now, so that's helping. But um, yeah, kudos to the women. I they were such a joy to watch the the, the last few Olympics, and I'm God, I'm so happy they won that gold. So happy. So Natasha, you've been keeping yourself busy. You've talked about some of the golf spots you're doing, and you're also doing some TV spots for a company called Come On Bet. Uh, we get a chance to see them in these parts. Uh, Vic, let's run one of those spots, shall we? Come on, have announced a multi-year deal as the official sports betting and online casino partner of the Canadian Premier League. In other come news. On! Come on! Yes! Come on! Come on! Yes! Come on! 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 Come on, sports betting and online casino. Boom, drain that 20-footer. <laughs> yeah. Do you were know how long it took me to get hitting? that ball to hit that putt? Did you see how bad the lawn was in the backyard there? I was yeah, like, putting yeah. over yeah, a box, yeah. and it took me a few, a, quite a few takes to get, well, yeah, 10 or 12 takes to finally hit that putt, not going to lie. Right. <laughs> yeah, you got some more. You got some more come on spots coming up? Can we talk about that? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I partnered up with um, with the Come On Betting Company out of the UK uh, for one year to do some promotional work for them. So I'm, I host a podcast for them every week and a few commercials as well. Uh, so there's another one uh, coming out. I don't know if you've ever been in a commercial, Joe, or if you're much of an actor, but I'm not much of an actress. So I watch these things back and I'm, oh my goodness, I, I, I don't like my performance, but... Um, <laughs> Oh, we seem to have uh, we've seemed to have lost the feed, Natasha. But uh, listen, uh, I I, I want to say that uh, it's been fantastic having you on, and, and uh, looking forward to those those come on bet sports. I'm sure well, there'll be more to come, as you mentioned, and uh, looking to see you uh, more of Natasha Staniszewski in uh, in future endeavors in in the, in the in the media online or whatever. Uh, if you want to follow Natasha. It's uh, Natasha Staniszewski on Facebook, at TV Natasha on Instagram, and TV Nat at TV Natasha on Twitter. Uh, once again, thank you for being on the show, Natasha. Oh, you're back. There you are. Oh, I was just saying goodbye I'm to back. you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, happens. yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's okay. I wanted to say that uh, um, great job with the spots. It's a lot of fun. Oh. I, I know I've done some, some uh, commercial work. I've also done a little bit of acting. I played a an NFL play-by-play -play guy really kind of typecast on, on a show called uh, Condor. And I did a, a news anchor uh, on a show called Anthrax. And, and so, uh, plus a, oh, a few yeah. commercial spots. But I know what it's like, but I, acting was my background. I was going to be an actor before I became a sportscaster until I started working the, oh. at the campus radio station at U of, T, or U of A. Sorry. And, uh, uh, yeah, so this is this is how we end up here. What um, you need to give me uh, some tips sure, then, because I feel like I'm a terrible yeah. actress. I'm like, I say, when I'm on the set and all those actors and actresses around me, they're so good, and I'm just trying to not overact. I'm an overactor. That's the problem. So it's it's tough acting. It's a, it's not people are like, oh, you're on TV all the time. It should be easy. But anchoring highlights and just ad libbing is not the same as reading a script and act. It's completely the opposite, right? It's, it's not the same, but you know, like that golf coach was telling you, 
uh, you got to be easier on yourself because you're doing you're doing a lot better than you think. Those spots were awesome. Okay, okay? that spot was awesome, okay. and uh, you did a fantastic job. And you know, uh, when you practice that stuff, you're only only going to get better, and better. So, anyway, great job, Natasha. I want to say thanks for being on the show. Good luck with everything you're doing in the future. We'll keep, be, be keeping an eye out for you for sure, and keep us posted on anything you got coming up. We'll, we'll be happy to plug it for you. And once again, uh, it's Nastasha Stanishevsky on Facebook at Natasha TV and on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, thank you again for being on the show. Uh, good luck with all those future endeavors. And remember, we're all in it together, okay? We've got Jay's Hockey, Boxing, and more when we come back. Thanks again, Natasha. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Hey, I'm Canadian rocker Tommy Gunn, and you got more Joe Tilly Sports coming up. Guests on Joe Tilly Sports receive a gift certificate from Classica Imports. Top of the line, imported men's clothing. Check out the Classica Essential Collection now. Go to shopclassica.com. Excuse me. Yeah, let me introduce you to Steve. Having the round of his life, finally gonna pick up some skins, then he gets here, and now this. Try entering and exiting the bunker on the same low side, and then just a couple of swipes with this to clean things up, and everything will be hunky-dory. When I'm working out, I like to wear my Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show t-shirt. It makes me feel handsome and strong. If you want a t-shirt, support the show, click on the link below. Now, back to my workout. 1761, 1762, 1763, 1764. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, reuniting families. The only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life. Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. 1-855-787-2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. Joe Tilly Sports is brought to you by COSA, Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, providing a united voice for harness horse people racing at Ontario tracks. Check out your benefits today at cosaonline.com and check out COSA TV on Facebook and YouTube for all the latest harness news and live action updates. Live racing, year-round. Go to hpibet.com for all your wagering options. Become a member today, and your first bet is free. That's hpibet.com. All right, time for my Cosa Swiss pick of the week. Well, last week, Ken Middleton and I both made a pick in Thursday night's eighth race at Mohawk. Ken took the number seven horse, pulled me through. Guess what? His horse pick took the lead right off the gate, and he would never look back. Pulled me through, pulled it out with Sylvan Fullian in the buggy. Would never relinquish that lead. My pick put your bet down with second all the way at 25 to 1, but in the deep stretch, he gave way to Sauble Amber. The 763 tractor paid $85.80. This week, I'm going to the fifth race in Monday night's card, and how can I not go with a horse named Mock David, the number four? Have you seen what the kid from Newmarket has been doing lately? Mock David uh, was a winner in his last time out with new trainer Jody Cullen. Travis Cullen will drive. I'm also going to do a $1 exacta box 246. After the smoke clears this week, I dropped a couple bucks. My bankroll is now at $77. And for all the racing updates, visit Costa TV on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Go to hpibet.com for your 
wagering offer uh, options. Well, okay, it was a heck of a week for the Blue Jays. Uh, to the surprise of no one, Robbie Ray became the fourth Blue Jay to grab a Cy Young Award. Ray led the league in the following categories. Innings pitched with 193 and a third. ERA with 2.84, strikeouts with 248, his whip was 1.05 and a 6.7 war number. Ray received 29 of 30 first place votes, and he is your Cy Young winner. The other great piece of news was Jose Barreos agreeing to a seven-year deal to stay in Toronto worth $131 million in a season split between the Blue Twins and the Blue Jays. Barreos uh, pitched 192 innings. Over uh, 32 starts, he had a career-best 3.52 ERA and a career-high 204 strikeouts. A 27-year right-hander loves it here in Toronto. This organization give us more than, you know, the contract, the money. You know, that's, that's, that's part of this. That's a bless too, but more than that, you guys give me, like, a confidence. Like, I feel really comfortable to be here, you know, in the city, like I say. In the clubhouse with my you know from the front office every staff member every coach coaching staff my teammate you know they i can call them then now my brother we're gonna spend seven more years together uh like i say i can promise we we're gonna we're gonna gonna do a lot of good thing for the city uh we're gonna have a lot of fun you guys gonna enjoy too from the from the stands and you know like I say, not only the contract and you know all that stuff. Just the way we we feel here, my family and I, uh, I'm we we're so glad and grateful for for this new opportunity. This is is such a huge day for the organization. As we think about what it's taken to get to the point where we can acquire someone of this magnitude, transition into the organization, someone of this magnitude. And now to be here today and extending Jose Barrios is a very big moment for this organization. Yes, it is. Now, the Leafs are on the road this week. Three games on the left coast starting Wednesday night in L.A. Nice win of the Islanders. Just while getting the shutout. Mitch Marner, a couple goals. Things are looking pretty good down on the farm as well. If Sheldon Keefe is looking for some offense, he might want to consider calling up Josh Hosang. Check out this great overtime winner by the former first-round pick. A 3-2 win over the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. The Marlies are second in the AHL's North Division. It's playoff time in the CFL. The Argos finished 9-5 and five to earn a bye into the Eastern Final. The Ticats will host Montreal in the conference semifinals. The Cats finished 8-6. The Alouettes 7-7. Seven and seven. Last time these two clubs met at Tim Hortons Field, the Al's defense came up huge, and they won this game 23-20 in overtime. It's going to be a good one. Should be a dandy. It'll be Saskatchewan and Calgary in the Western Semi, and Winnipeg gets the bye. It's been a long while now, but pro boxing returns to Southern Ontario Saturday, December 4th. United Promotions will host a six-boat pro card at the CAA Center in Brampton. There will be some exciting young local talent on the card, including unbeaten middleweight Sudeep Singh Badi, who faces a tough Mexican opponent, Josh Wagner, Dylan Rushton, Mark Smither, Jason Alexander, Josh Fraser, who makes his pro debut after a terrific amateur career. And let's talk about the top pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world, shall we? So who is the best pound-for-pound pound fighter on the planet right now? Let's discuss it, shall we? Fresh off his dismantling of Sean Porter, there's going to be a lot of fingers pointing toward Terrence Bud Crawford. I mean, the dude can flat-out fight. 38-0. You want to box? No problem. Trade shots? He's on it. TBC certainly merits serious consideration. Maybe at this juncture, he gets the nod. I mean, it is fresh. But let's talk about the other fighter in this mix. Saul Canelo Alvarez, the Mexican manhandler. Just one blemish on a 65 pro career. The undisputed super middleweight champion of the world. Titles in four divisions. Just announced he's going for number five. Yes, Canelo Alvarez, who started his career as a 15-year-old welterweight, is going to step up to cruiserweight to trade shots with Alunga Jr. Makabu, who holds the WBC strap at 200 pounds. Now, Makabu, who hails from the Congo, packs a wallop, 28-2, 25 knockouts, but he's been stopped before 
and he's never been in the ring with a guy like Canelo before. Now, if Alvarez wins that bout, there's your pound-for-pound pound champion without question. How does Crawford top that? Well, a unification bout with Errol Spence Jr. might just do it. Or, if he's really got the jam, how about moving up for a 160-pound shot at Canelo? Doesn't that sound like a... It's one of the top sports memorabilia collections you're ever going to see. As we head down the stairs into Jeff Shaw's basement in North Oshawa, we see a signed robe from Muhammad Ali, a signed Michael Jordan jersey with ticket stubs from some of his biggest games, just about every significant hockey player you can imagine. Who's your favorite Leaf? Teeter Kennedy? The Chief? Johnny Bauer? Eddie Shack? Horton? Boomer Bond? King Clancy? Wendell? Dougie? Daryl? The Big M? You a Bobby Orr fan? Or Lindros? Hal? Bobby Hull? Derek Sanderson? Team Canada? Jeff has a stick signed by the Russian side that battled Canada. Baseball? How about some Blue Jays? Or Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle, Ted Williams. He's got Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, Yogi Berra, Bob Feller. NFL, CFL, boxing, golf, all signed. And Jeff loves his blue and white. In fact, he's got a billiards room entirely devoted to the Maple Leafs. Thousands of pieces. Very fond of the leaf room. Plus, it's fun. We have a pool table in there, too. And you have that nice uh, uh, aura with the leaves around you. It just makes a nice, nice situation. What about, uh, what kind of value do you think you got on, the, on all this stuff? That's a great question, Joe. Uh, people have talked about selling it. Uh, Phil just mentioned about selling the home. I'd have to investigate that, but there are definitely thousands of thousands. My brother, he's a bit... Well, he thinks he's a bit of a, an accountant. He says, you got $40,000 here, easy. And that's on a bad day, you know, depending on who, the, who you're selling to. Where did you get most of this stuff? Well, I got most of it from my pal right there. He should be on the TV. Mikey Glanfield, he went to the auctions. He goes to the weekly auctions. And throughout all his time with the, at, the, uh, at the auctions, he bids on different things. He's got his phone ready. She says, I got this. I got this. How much you want to pay for it? I got this. I got Bobby Orr. How much you want to pay for it? This kind of thing. We deal with it. He'd either purchase it or not. So Mikey's the man. He's responsible for more, most of this uh, mess. i tell you what a bonus is. Being downstairs here because there's no dust. Yeah. I have never dusted those things in decades, which is really cool. Yeah, dusting would be a heck of a job. Jeff Shaw, and I've never seen anything like it. I really have not. Uh, the Raptors are stumbling along 1-3 and three on this current six-game Western swing. A lot after loss at Golden State. The trip continues this week in Memphis and wraps up in Indiana as they come back east. Uh, great week for Mackenzie Hughes at the RMS Classic in Georgia. The Ancaster native closed with an 862 to finish at 19 under. Good for second spot. Three shots behind Taylor Gooch. That's a tournament he formerly won. Our thoughts and prayers go to the family of Fred Dunbar today, the longtime athletic therapist for the Argos and former trainer of the year in the CFL. Freddie once broke up a potential scrap between myself and Conrad Holloway. He was well loved by all who knew him. Fred Dunbar was 82. And we close with a uh, look at the folks who make this show possible. These are friends, trusted business associates, and all-around great people. I highly recommend them all. A reminder that the show is now so, now also available on Spotify, iTunes, Breaker, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, and Pocket Cast, as well as the Spanglish Network and Zingo TV. And like and subscribe the show on YouTube. Thanks once again to Natasha, Natasha Stanishevsky for being on the show. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Uh, we've got Olympic bronze medalist Catherine Beauchemin Pinard dropping by. We'll see you then. Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show is brought to you by Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future.
At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. And let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family and your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did 905-686-5678. Brought to you by MNP, a leading Canadian national accounting, tax, and business consulting firm. MNP proudly serves and responds to the needs of our clients in the private, public, and non-for-profit sectors. Through partner-led engagements, MNP provides a collaborative, cost-effective approach to doing business and personalized strategies to help people and organizations succeed across the country and around the world. With local offices in Oshawa, Toronto, Mississauga, Burlington and more, our team is here to support you. Visit mnp.ca to learn more. Hi, I'm Joe Tilly, and I want to tell you about the painting pros. Patrick and his crew recently came into my home and they painted the walls, they added some color, it's fantastic. And I can't be more satisfied with the work they did. That crew is tremendous. They were professional, they were courteous, they were respectful, and they did a fantastic job. I just can't stress enough how satisfied we truly are with Patrick and his crew. For all your painting needs, go to the pros. You know, if I'm going to a public place or visiting a friend, I like to be safe and stylish. That's why I put on my Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show mask. Come on in. If you want to support the show, pick up a mask, click on the link below.